Hi, this is Joel Neely from Eastens Transportation Group, Kenful, Nova Scotia. Today we're going to do a pre-trip on a Class 1 vehicle, Class 1 truck and trailer. Your truck and trailer may not look exactly like this one. Some of the parts may be in a different spot, but overall, this should give you a good idea what we're expecting in your daily pre-trip. We usually start at the door and the first thing we're going to do is unlock the hood. So I walk around, taking a quick look, see if there's any major leaks underneath or any major damage that would stop the pre-trip right, right away, but this truck looks to be in great shape. Unlock the other side. Because this truck has, uh, has a collision avoidance system in the front where normally you would put your foot, you have to lift it from the side. All right, as I open the hood, the first thing I want to do is just take a look and see if there's anything seriously wrong under the hood. There's any major leaks, anything's falling off, that would mean I would have to go straight to the garage. But this truck looks to be in excellent shape underneath. Then I like to take a look at the fluids right away. So in this one, on this side of the truck, the only thing I can see is the washer fluid, which I can see it, meaning it's full. That's great. So then I'm gonna go to the top. And up here on the top, the cab, and the visor look to be in great shape. I can see four out of the five lights and they look to be good. The windshield, no cracks, looks to be in good shape. And my wiper is good tension, and there's nothing blocking my air intake. On the top of the motor, all my hoses, all my intake items, all my clamps, all my piping, everything looks to be in great shape. I don't seem to have any uh, anything leaking. I can't see any black soot, which would indicate that I had a blow-by of a seal anywhere under the motor. And down by the turbo, there's no oil leaks and there's no major, uh, major issues that would cause me any concern. As I work my way down, I look at my belts. My main belt here looks to be in great shape. It's tight, there's no cuts and frays. My alternator connections look to be in great shape. My radiator on this side is clear. There's no leaks from it. The fan looks to be in great shape and the hub looks to be good. So I work my way down to the frame of the truck. I take a look at my air be in great shape. My lines look good. The hood rod right beside it is connecting the hood and the safety strap, which keeps the hood from falling on the ground, is in great shape. All of my uh, components that are bolted to the frame, the bolts look to be in really good shape. The uh, shock looks in good shape. The spring itself, the spring shackles, no cuts. Generally, you're going to see the brakes in between the uh, the U-bolts there. If you do break a spring, and it looks to be in great shape. Air lines, all my ABS lines go into my brake cans. The brake can itself, all the braking components look to be well lubed. There's lots of grease. It's in good shape. The back side of the tire, no bulges indicating I have a broken belt. The tread itself looks to be in great shape. The outside of the tire is great. The rim. No cracks, uh, everything looks to be good. I have a valve stem cover. Now in this truck, I can't check the wheel lug nuts to see if they're tight, because they have uh, decorative covers on them, but a good way to tell is if there's a rust streaking coming from any of those nuts, that's a good way to kind of note that there could be a loose wheel nut, and that's something you should take to the shop and get it checked out right away. In this truck, nothing of that. And there's lots of air in my tire. As I work my way around, the bumper, the side of the bumper and the side of the hood, including my decal, the headlight, and my fender mirror, which is very important, are clear. I will be able to see out of them when I start my trip. The hood itself is in great shape. The grill, all the components, and uh, very important, my license plate and the registration is, uh, is good until next September. If you have a registration issue, get a hold of HR. We'll be able to help you out. The bottom, uh, the bottom deflector in these trucks, these newer trucks, is very low to the ground. Sometimes it can become damaged in ice and snow events, but it looks to be in great shape. The side of the hood here looks great. The decal's clear. My fender mirror, good and secure. The lens is clear. My headlight is good. And the side portion of the bumper, all in great shape on this side of the truck. So we're back here on the driver's side. Now we're going, to, uh, we're going to check the fluids once again. This truck is cold. So in this truck, my, my uh, coolant level is at cold min, which is right where I want it to be for the temperature of the truck. So that's great. My power steering 
is in the middle, which is where I want it to be. It's, uh, it's in perfect condition. And I'm probably now, I'm gonna check the most important fluid, and that's my oil. I'm gonna pull my dipstick out. My oil is right about the max line, so that's in great shape. You could do a double pull if you like, which means cleaning it off, putting it back in. But for this, uh, this video, single pull is fine. We're gonna go back up to the top again. The top of the truck looks great. The visor, it's attached again on this side. My lights look good on this side. The windshield is in great shape. My vehicle inspection sticker, my vehicle is inspected until the end of November 2021. So that means this vehicle just went through uh, inspection um, and is good for a little more than one year. The wiper on this side is in good shape, good tension, nothing blocking anything. Everything up top looks good. Down into the motor, my intake, I can see in there it's clear. Sometimes stuff can fall in this, so you kind of take a look, but there's nothing in there. It looks to be in great shape. All my fuel rail, the side of the motor, no major leaks, nothing's falling off. Everything looks to be in good shape. All of my hoses, all of my piping, my clamps, everything on the side looks to be good. There's, there's no soot or anything that I could see that would kind of make me think that there's a blowback or a loose fitting. All my couplers, my cooling system, my radiator itself, the fan, everything looks to be in great shape. On this truck, uh, my steering is tight. It's good and secure. I'd like to see that. All of the airlines going back into the truck, running all your major components, are in good shape. Uh, usually an airline is a colored line like that, and you want to just make sure that they're not broken. You know, it doesn't look like they're leaking or anything like that, and they look to be in really good shape. So I work my way down the side of the truck here. I look at the frame. All the components bolted to the frame are securely fastened. Everything looks to be in really good shape. My cab mount back there is in great shape. My uh, springs, my shocks, nothing's leaking. Again, down by the U-bolts, there's no brakes. Everything looks to be really, really good. Up front here, again, my hood rod on this side is in great shape, it's secured, which is awesome. And my safety strap is also secured. This side we have some steering components. So my, my arms, all the steering components, castle nut with its locking key, everything's in good. My steering pump itself, no leaks. There's fluid inside that, so if you see something leaking, you know you have an issue. And also my tow hooks up front are securely fastened and uh, hopefully we, uh, we never have to use them. Back here on the side of the tire, all my brake components, the lines, my ABS line, my main air line, the chamber itself, the slack adjuster, all the braking components look to be in great shape. They're well lubricated, um, this truck's in uh, good shape. The back side of the tire is in great shape. The tread itself is in great shape. The outside of the tread, or the outside of the tire is in great shape. There's no bulges, which would indicate that there's a broken belt. The rim, no cracks. All, usually you'll see your rims will crack in between the circles, nothing there. Again, my lug nuts are covered with decorative covers, so I can't see if there's any, uh, any loose ones visually, but with no streaking coming from any of the nuts, no rust streaking, I'm, I'm pretty certain that they're in great shape and the covers are fixed. This also has a good valve stem cover. Because the, the uh, tire is not sitting on the ground, I know that there's air in it. If I had an air gauge, I could check and make sure I had a proper proper uh, air temperature or air uh, supply. Other than that, we're going to take one last look at this truck just to see if there's anything we missed. Kind of step back a little bit and sometimes you just want to take a kind of a slow look and just make sure there's nothing there that you might want to miss and then we'll close the hood. When we close the hood on these trucks, make sure you use two hands. Sometimes they can pull you forward. Close it slowly. And then very important to make sure that both sides are locked. As I walk back around, I take another look at the hood, all the bumper, my mirrors, and I lock this side as well. I'll start the outside portion of this uh, pre-trip now. What is the walk around on the outside of the truck and trailer? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the door and I'm gonna supply the air to the trailer just so when I go by the trailer, I'm able to hear any leaks like that. So I supply the air to the trailer, making careful sure that the truck air is, uh, is in the out position, meaning the brakes are on. I've also turned the headlights on 
just to uh, be able to check the lights while I'm doing this. I'm gonna open the bunk compartment so I can take a look in there as well. My door opens and closes good and looks to be in great shape. My mirror looks to be in great shape. The handle, everything looks good. Side of the truck, including my upper window, my bunk vent, looks to be in really good shape. I'm gonna take a quick look under here at the battery compartment. The batteries are in great shape. No corrosion on them. Also, my DEF cap is uh, affixed and, uh, and looks to be in good shape. The steps are in good shape. They look to be secured to the truck, along with my, uh, my fender flares, look to be really good as well. My backup light is secure and uh, looks to be in good shape. Inside of my bunk compartment, first thing I'm gonna take a look at is my first aid kit. Every truck should have a first aid kit. Uh, this one's still wrapped in its original plastic when we first got it, so that tells me that it hasn't been opened and it's probably in great shape. If you find that your first aid kit isn't in its original plastic, you know, it's a good idea to take a look inside and make sure that everything that should be in there is in there. And if you have any questions, contact us in HR. Also, the fire extinguisher is in here. The fire extinguisher has the pin, which is in the lock position, so it doesn't accidentally go off while you're driving down the road. And it's in the green, meaning it's fully charged. Everything else in here, uh, there's some, this driver has some extra supplies and a few other items which are great to have. There's uh, triangles inside of the bunk in this truck as well, so the driver has them stored in a little different position. Make sure you have three triangles with every truck. So again, as we work our way along, we're gonna take a look at the back of the cab first. This truck has, uh, has a nice selection of load bars in it and they look to be properly secured. All of my airlines go into my trailer. The hangers are in great shape. The lines themselves look to be in really, really good shape. This truck also has the, uh, the extra plug to go to the reefer to make to be able to charge the battery while you're sleeping that Jeremy and his crew put in, which is an awesome shape and means that we can, uh, we can charge the truck. So that's that plug that's still plugged into the back of the truck. This is a good spot to take a look at your fuel tanks. With these trucks with the long fairings, it's hard to see, but in this one, the fuel tank, Looks to be in really good shape. The supports and the straps are great. And I looked underneath and it doesn't appear that anything is leaking out of the fuel tank. So it's in great shape. The one thing you do want to do is just open the cap and verify that the amount of fuel in your tank is the same amount that's in your dash. Sometimes the fuel, uh, the fuel gauge might break and uh, you don't want to run into that, especially with winter coming. Also on the back of the truck here, we have two shocks and two airbags. The shocks and the airbags look to be in great shape. The, the, walk, the plate on the back of this truck, all the frame components, the front mud flap, everything looks to be in great shape along with the steps. Now, we're gonna get into the tires and stuff here. Uh, I have a hammer and I like to give the tires a little tap just to make sure that there's air, air in them. It's not foolproof. Obviously, if you have a gauge and you're able to check the proper, proper pressure, that would be better. But the hammer gives me a good idea. If I don't get a dull, you know, or a flat feel, I know there's probably good air inside these. The back of these tires, very important to take a look at. Um, wheel seals are often an issue. If you have a bunch of oil on the back side of your tires, that's when you can kind of be sure that you have a wheel seal gone. And obviously wheel seals can lead to fires, they can lead to wheels coming off. And uh, very important to just take a look behind them and make sure that you don't have any wheels. An easy way to do it is actually to look at the one opposite of you while you're doing this one. So I can look across the truck and see the one on the other side and then vice versa when I come back on this side. All right, so all my frame, my, my hangers, everything looks good. All my nuts on the frame, everything looks like it should, you know? You can tell that this truck has had a couple parts removed because a couple of the nuts are different colors. And that's great. I mean, it's been the shop. The boys have taken a great look at it. While we're underneath here, we'll take a look at the fifth wheel. The fifth wheel is probably uh, the most important part of this whole, uh, this whole operation. Your plate at the bottom of the trailer should be sitting flat on your fifth wheel. If there's air or light space in between the bottom plate and your fifth wheel, you probably aren't secured. You know, it could be sitting on top of the pin and that's where you're gonna run into trouble. So make sure it's nice and flat. Make sure the handle is all the way in. Our trucks, uh, for the most part, don't have sliders, but if there is sliders, make sure the sliders in the, are in the locked and outward position. While we're under here, we can actually take a look at the spring hanger as well, making sure that all the bolts holding it. And we can take a look at the airbag. We can take a look at all the brake cans. We can see the drive shaft under there. If the drive shaft was laying on the ground, then you're gonna need to call the shop right away. While we're here, we're gonna take another look at this other set of tires. 
and they all look to be good. The tires and uh, the tires themselves are in great shape. The outer treads are in good shape, the inner treads. Something to take a look at is if there's rocks in between these tires. Oftentimes rocks get stuck in between these tires. One of two things can happen. They can rub, blow your tire or start a fire, or they could come out on the highway, fly back and hit a vehicle behind you, which would also be a very, uh, very bad situation. The tires uh, down here, we're gonna take a look at the rims. Both rims look to be in great shape. Um, this truck's relatively new. All the nut covers, again, decorative covers on this truck, so it's hard to tell if the nuts are loose, but there's no streaking, so I'm, I'm pretty happy that they're, uh, they're nice and tight. The valve stems are great. There's covers on them. Everything looks to be in great shape. Same thing for this, uh, this rim beside it. Won't go into all the detail again, but it's the same idea. Rim's good. No streaking from the nuts. Uh, covers are good. Um, there's, a, there's a seal behind that cover which could possibly leak oil. Um, so you, if, if you see a bunch of oil pooling in the bottom of your rim, it's probably coming from there. So it's good to get to the shop right away. And my mud flap looks to be in great shape along with uh, my mud flap hanger. I'm gonna go underneath the truck. Uh, this next part's very important. The, um, what you wanna do is take a look forward while you're under here. You can look at your rear ends. You can look at the back of the uh, fifth wheel and you can really check and make sure that that's locked. Everybody does a, a tug test, or they should, but uh, really getting underneath and verifying that, that uh, the jaws are locked around that pin is, is really important. We can look at the back of the frame, we can look at all the air lines coming through here, all of our suspension components on both sides. We can see them all from here. We can see our airbags, we can see the back pedestals. Again, the rear end to see if the rear ends are leaking. We could see that. Any of these issues under here, you want to go right to the shop, get a hold of the shop, see what they can they can help you out. Um, you can also, um, while you're under here, you can look at the back of the wheels on this back set of tandems and make sure there's nothing leaking. You know, the seals aren't leaking and there's there's no issues there as well. Um, if you see anything looks out of place, call the shop. Also, while we're here, we can take a look at the two. Uh, back back lights in the back of this truck obviously we don't have our brake lights on just our marker and our reverse lights just above it but everything looks to be in good shape and and you might want to just take a quick look up at the underneath of the trailer i mean you have the trailer above you here take a look at the ribs if you see a bunch of rust a bunch of rot then then it's not a safe trailer to haul turn around 180 degrees and you look at your landing gear your landing gear is secured to the bottom of the trailer you want to make sure it's not hanging off you want to make sure the bar that connects the two landing gear arms is connected and is not rotten. Um, sometimes when that bar breaks, you'll find that one leg will go up and not the other, and that could be a, a bad situation if you were to drop the trailer with uh, only one leg. So we're gonna take a quick look at the side of the trailer before we carry on. Um, the side of this trailer is uh, beautiful. It's a nice stainless trailer. This trailer is inspected until the end of November, 2021. So this also has just gone through inspection has a brand new inspection sticker. And the registration for this trailer is up front in this little holder. Always check your registration just to make sure everything's good. Check it against your plate. The paperwork should match. Again, if you have any issues, contact HR, Michelle Banks, and she'll help you out. All right, so we took a little look at the landing gear. We've just hooked up to this trailer, but I just want to verify that everything's working great. So I'm going to lower my landing gear a couple inches both legs are coming down evenly. I'm going to raise it back up. When it gets to the top, put the handle in the lock position. Everything's great. Side of the trailer again looks to be in great shape. This trailer is well lit up, so it has lots of lights, and all the lights look to be in great shape. It's a beautiful trailer. All right, we have our reefer fuel tank. This is our reefer fuel tank. The straps look to be in good shape. The hangers, everything seems good. It's got a good solid cap on it, and it's full of fuel. Also underneath, there's no leaks. Doesn't look like it's leaking from underneath. Doesn't look like there's any, any issues. The underneath of the trailer looks to be in great shape, right back to the back tandems. Ribs look to be in great shape, and everything where it is is where it is. I have my main marker and signal light on the side of this truck right here. Signal lights aren't on at this time, but if they were, that would be flashing, and it's lit up right now. Working our way back, we're not going to go underneath the trailer right now. We're going to do a full brake inspection video here in a few moments. So, uh, so we'll save that. 
But I do want to take a good look at the tires back here. So again, I'm a trusty hammer, give them both a good smack. I check in between both sets for any, uh, any stones, rocks, things out of place. I want to make sure that my suspension is aired up or lowered to pat down depending on what I'm doing. If I'm getting ready to hit the highway right now, this trailer is supplied with air, my suspension should be up. If your suspension isn't up at this point, go to the shop, get them to help you, but make sure that your suspension is up. All right, we've, uh, we've had some issues with uh, driving along with suspension down. Check these back two tires, look to be in great shape. The treads on these are great. Again, all the frame rail, everything looks to be in really, really good shape. So this set of uh, tandems back here, you're able to see a little more than we were on the front set. So on this set of tandems, I can actually see all my lug nuts, which I can take a quick look. Generally, you're not gonna turn your lug nuts, but there's a collar back behind it, and you may get that to move if they're loose. And they're not loose, they're in great shape. This also has an exposed hub on it, and you can check if you can see any oil down here, then that's great. There is a full and add level. To be honest, if you can see oil in there, you're in good shape. Valve stems have a cover on them. They look to be good. The rim itself, the tires, everything looks to be in great shape. And it's the same for this. Take a quick look and check all my nuts. Again, no leaks. Get oil in my hub. Everything looks to be in great shape. Moving on. I got my back mud flap here. Looks to be in great shape. Everything is uh, hanging good. Very important. These here sometimes get broken. These are your uh, hooks for your doors as you open. Make sure that they're in great shape. If they're not there, get a hold of the shop, get someone to fix it. Back side of the trailer, really good shape. My ABS light is out. Your ABS light should be out until there's an ABS issue. If for some reason, when you hook up to your trailer, your ABS light will not go out, you need to talk to the shop and clarify with them. That usually signifies there's an anti-lock braking system issue. In this truck with the light out, that's great. The marker light's working. The back of this truck and trailer, very straightforward. I got five lights across the top. All of my doors look to be in great shape. My hinges, all eight of them look to be in great shape. I'm gonna take a look at the door here. Opens and closes, it's great. I'm gonna open the door on the trailer. Take a look. This trailer has uh, been washed. It's great, it's very clean. The inside of the trailer looks good, shoots good. No major damage, front roof sides, everything looks good. We're gonna close the door. When I close the door, I verify that the top and bottom hinges are locked. My lights across the bottom are in great shape. My two bumpers are good. And also, I wanna verify that my plate is good. This plate is uh, it's registered until December of 2024, so it's good for a good first fifth period of time. My ICC bumper is good. The uh, you need to have 75% of your tape left on this at all times. So this is getting close, but it does pass for now. But something that the shop will have to probably replace the taping on the back in the near future. Go to the side here again, same as the other side. I can look all the way down the side of the trailer. No major damage. Everything looks in great shape. I can see all my lights. My marker lights look to be in great shape. Same thing again, we're not going to go into it too much, but my uh, my mud flap, my tires, no leaks, you know, the treads, and do a quick look. Nothing in between the tires. Treads are good. No streaking for me, not. I got uh, fluid in both hubs, and I have valve stem covers on all, uh, all the valve stems. All right, this truck, uh, let's take a quick look under here as well that our sliding locking pins are in great shape. Something uh, you want to take a look on both sides. With my hammer, I can give them a little tap and just make sure that they are good as well. Uh, the locking pins, um, you just want to make sure they're in the frame and through the holes so the trailer is secure. Back through here, we have a spare tire. Let's make sure it's in good shape and it's locked and secure and this one is chained in place. The spare tire hanger, you just want to make sure that it is uh, attached to the truck. Again, my marker and signal lights on this side are in great shape. Side of the truck is in great shape. Something, uh, something I want to talk about right here, we get into the, um, the uh, dolly leg setup. Before you leave, it's a good idea to clean these rocks off. We often get rocks 
bigger rocks sitting on top of that. Just clean them off so they don't bounce off and hit a vehicle behind you. The side of all of our landing gear looks to be in great shape. Again, we're back to our tractor. Mud flap, hanger is secure. We have our tires. All are in good shape. Nothing's between them. And same as the other side, we're gonna take a quick look at the treads on all four, which look good. The rims, nut covers, hub. We're gonna look across, make sure that there's no leaks or no oil on any of the tires, signifying that there could be a, a hub issue. And this, this looks great. The one last thing I wanna do before I leave here is I wanna take a look at this side of the fifth wheel. Again, we take a look and we make sure that the fifth wheel is, uh, there's no light. It's nice and tight against the bottom plate of the trailer, which it is. And that all the bolts that secure the fifth wheel are in great shape. Also take a look at your spring hangers and suspensions while you're here, a little closer view, and they look to be in good shape as well. This truck on the front corner, we take a quick look here. We have, a, we have our automatic lube system, which is up here. You just wanna make sure that's full of grease. If, uh, if it's not, contact the shop and they'll fill it up for you. And also your fuel tank on this side. Again, same thing. Taking a look to make sure there's no leaks. The cap is on, hangers are good. And you can actually see the exhaust just down below the uh, lubrication system. You're just making sure it's not dragging on the ground. It's in good shape. The uh, reefer itself, is in great shape. We don't seem to have any issues. Side of the truck is in great. I have my, um, my backup light on the side of the truck here, which looks to be good. The cab itself all looks to be in great shape. My fairings, my steps, my door, my mirror, good and secure. And there we've, uh, we've taken a walk around the truck. Hi, it's Joel. We're inside the cab now. We're going to do the inside the cab check. So when I first got in the truck, made sure the seat was good and secure to the truck. Let me check the seat belt for cuts, sprays, and just make sure it locks. Seat belt seems to be in good shape. Next thing I want to do is check the steering. Make sure it's secure and in the proper position for me. Check all my mirrors. Make sure that they're clear. There's a little rain on them today, just a little wet out, but overall they're pretty clear and uh, seems to be in the proper position for me. My front windshield there's nothing in the way. It looks like uh, it's good and clear. Both my side windows look good and clear and I can see out of them. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and start the truck. First thing I like to do is just turn the key to on and let the, let the uh, gauges do a quick sweep so I know that they're all working, which they are. I fire the truck up. And the first thing I'm looking at here is the oil pressure. So my oil pressure comes right up and that's great. If your oil pressure does not come up, then that will be an issue. All my uh, lights are correct. You can see that my RPM is running at 600 RPM. And it's responsive to the fuel pedal. My kilometer, my speedometer gauge is uh, at zero, which is great because we're not moving. My air is uh, filling up presently and is almost over 100 already. And my water temperature is cold because the truck has, has been off. I also want to, uh, while I'm right here at the steering area, I'm gonna check my wipers. They work, and my washer fluid, which seems to work great. Very important, especially with the winter months coming up. My signal, my right signal light, I can hear it, I can see it on the dash. My left signal, I can hear it, and I can see it on the dash. We verify those when we do our light check outside. My steering is great. I checked and made sure that my truck is in a new, neutral position. If you have a standard, just make sure that the stick is loose and you make sure that both your brakes are set. I'm gonna take a, a top-down look here. So everything inside the cab is in good shape. All my doors are closed. You don't want anything falling on you while you're driving down the road. My visors are in good working position and if I needed them, are there. My dash is free of any obstructions. You know, I don't want anything to fall while I'm driving, possibly fall underneath and become a hazard on the floor that could affect my, uh, my, uh, my driving. Uh, while I'm right here, I'm gonna check both my power windows. So my right power window goes up, and down. Same thing on my left, goes down and back up. So both my windows are working well. And I'll check my horns. My air works. <laughs> And my service works as well. All my gauges look really good. My dash gauges are good. 
This is my air gauge here. This is the pressure on the tractor itself. So your weight gauge, which is good. I have an empty trailer attached, uh, so it's showing about right. My axle temps are cold, which they, they should be for, for this time of uh, this time of day. In fact, the truck hasn't run long. Let me check my heater. So my, my heater, first thing I want to do, and the most important, is I want to make sure my defroster's working. And I got all kinds of air coming out of there. I'm going to check my floor. And my floor is working great. And I'm going to check the face one. And that has air coming out of all the vents as well. So my heating system is working great, or cooling system, depending on the time of the year. And that seems to be in really good shape. All my gauges down here underneath my people net system. My sleeper dome light works great. My, uh, my, my other lights just make sure I'm good or in good shape. My footwell lights are good. I can see the light on my foot. My dome light is working great. My utility lights. I actually can see they came on even though it's daylight. Uh, on that stainless trailer, I can tell that they're on on both sides, which is great. My automatic traction control is in the neutral position, which is perfect. And my engine shutdown override is, is where it should be. Now, don't ever use that without, uh, without talking to the shop first. When the engine shutdown comes on in these trucks, sometimes it could be a real important issue. And uh, if you use the engine shutdown override, it could, uh, could be really detrimental to the truck. Here we have our locking differentials, which is huge. You want to make sure that they're in the unlocked or run position, my inner axle and my forward and my front diff. Just making sure, um, if, they're, um, if they're locked and you're driving down the highway at highway speed, you could do some real damage to the, to the, to the differentials. Also my suspension. This is my, uh, my lowering and raising suspension. When I hit the lower button, as you can hear, a buzzer goes off and a red light comes on. I just want to make sure that's in the run position, which it is. So what I want to do now is I want to do a quick um, fan down. And the fan down is a great way to check how your air compressor is working on your truck. So what we do with a fan down, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we're over 100 pounds or 120 pounds of pressure, which we can tell that we are, which is great. So I want to put a little bit of just covering my brake pedal and I'm going to supply my, my trailer with air. And I kind of want it to drop down a little bit, which it is, it's showing the air is flowing through the lines, which is perfect. And then I'm going to supply my, my truck with air. So right now I have my foot on the brake and I'm going to fan it down to below 100 pounds. And what I want to do is I want to see if the truck air compressor is going to kick back in and start building this back up before I go too far. If I continue the fan down and the air compressor doesn't work, then I'm, I'm locked in place. But at least this way I would be able to un unpin from the trailer and easily towed. And as you can see, the air gauge is building back up, so that's great. So next thing I'm going to do is keep solid compressions. I'm going to go down until the light and buzzer come off. And they should come in around 50 to 75, which they did. And it's telling me that I have low air pressure. My foot's still firmly on the brake. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fan it down until both my tractor and trailer buttons pop, which they did right there. And they popped at the 35 mark, which is exactly where I want them to pop. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to time it from 50 to 90 PSI. So it's going to hit 50 right now. And what I want to do is see if I can get up to about 90 PSI, which would be just before the 100 line in under three minutes. So I take a quick look on my watch or my clock. And as you can see, it's coming up pretty quick. This has to be done at an idle. Um, when the DOT tests you, they do it at an idle. Um, the three minute standard is, is pretty easily met in most of these uh, most of these tractor units you'll find that the average is probably going to be around a minute and a half as that's uh, building up I'm gonna take a quick look for my paperwork so my paperwork's in a binder beside me here it's going to my registration I want to make sure I have a valid insurance card valid registration all my documents if I'm going to cross the border everything should be in this binder in your door pocket if there is any issues if you're missing something if one of your transponders on the window isn't there contact us and we will uh, we will get that for you right away so we're just under a minute into our buildup, and we've already passed the 75 mark. Um, through, through, uh, so we got another about another 20 pounds to go, and it's it's going quite quickly. Taking a quick look around while I'm doing this, my oil pressure is still great, my RPMs are still great, everything looks to be in great shape. And there you go, we've hit 90 pounds in just over a minute, which is phenomenal. 
So now I can actually apply a little bit of fuel and I can build the air pressure up. And what I'm looking for is the blow off. So that's when the air compressor stops working and when it uh, gets it to temperature or to uh, pressure. So I'm using about a thousand, pound, a thousand RPMs of uh, pressure right now. And as you can see, it's building quite rapidly. My water temperature is actually starting to rise because the truck's been running for a few minutes. So that's great. It's telling me that the water temperature uh, gauge is working correctly. And we'll just wait for the, uh, the blow off, which we'll be able to hear. Again, while I'm doing this, I'm listening for any odd noises, weird sounds, something that might be concerning. And there we go. We have our blow off at the proper 130 PSI. So that, that concludes the fan down test and the air brake, uh, the air, air pressure system check, which seems to be great. The last part of that test is we're just going to, um, we're gonna put a foot on the brake and we're gonna supply both the trailer and the truck and we're gonna shut the truck off. And what that's gonna do is we're gonna be able to tell if say you rolled up to a stop sign, you know, uh, how much air you might lose sitting there if you had an air leak somewhere in one of your maxi cans or in your air brake system. So I put my foot on the brake, I supply both of them, and I shut the truck off. The only thing I do have to do is just leave it on accessory so it reads it. It's gonna drop a little bit just because A, it's, it's supplying the truck and trailer. But that's about what you want to see. You want to see no real movement in a three second interval, which um, you can only go three pounds per minute. So, I mean, it's, it looks really, really good. So I think we're in, we're in great shape. I pull my maxis and I shut my key off and that concludes my in-cab check. Hi folks, Joel again. We're gonna finish up our pre-trip today with a check of our lights. Um, we're gonna check our marker lights, our signal lights, headlights. And uh, we're going to speak a little bit about the brake lights at the end. So the first thing I want to do before I exit the cab, I'm going to turn my headlights on and I'm going to turn my uh, right signal light on. The reason for that, I also have to turn my, uh, my key on just to make sure that uh, everything's working right. So I'm going to use three points of contact when I exit the cab. It's very important. We've had a lot of slips and falls. So we just want to make sure everybody's safe as possible. So I noticed as I turn my headlights on, my marker lights are on, which is great. My uh, five visor lights are on my headlights are on high beam currently and my uh my signal light is working we're gonna take a little look outside the truck so again the signal light's working and it's uh it's working inside of the truck as well underneath the tractor we can see that the signal light is working as well The signal light on the side of the trailer is activated and working correctly. And the marker light on the back of the trailer is on. All of our uh, five marker lights across the top of the uh, trailer are working. Both marker lights on the left hand side are working and my right signal and uh, right marker light are currently on as well. So we're going to take a walk down the right hand side and just make sure like, like that uh, the lights are not signaling because the lights on this side shouldn't be signaling yet because I haven't turned that signal light on. A lot of folks say, well, how come you don't use your four ways all the time to check your lights? So the four ways the signal lights aren't really connected. So the four ways have a direct connection back. If you had a fault in your signal light switch, it actually wouldn't activate even though your four ways might still. So you have to make sure your signal lights are working in case we uh, have a fault there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get back into the cab. I'm gonna turn my low beams on and my left signal. So I see my left signal's on here. And I'm gonna look at the front of my truck. And I notice that my signal light is on and both my lights are down to the low beam setting, which is correct. We're gonna walk back. Again, everything seems to be working as I'm walking back. I can take a look at my higher lights and my marker lights. I take a look under the tractor and I can see that my signal light is signaling like it should. The signal light on the side of the trailer is working great. All my marker lights are working great. Uh, my ABS light is not illuminated, which is great. And my marker light is. And of course, the uh, signal light at the back is working correctly. And the other one is shut off, which is what I asked it to do. So the last part I'm going to check is my four ways. So again, as I'm walking back to the truck, I like to, I like to walk 
a couple feet away if I can, just to get a better view of everything and just one last look before I hit the road, just to make sure that there's nothing that I missed during my original pre-trip. But everything looks really good with this tractor and trailer. So I'm gonna shut my signal light off, turn my four ways on, and do one last walk around. So now my signals are working everywhere. My headlights are still on, of course. My signal's working. Again, as I walk down this side, I do have the room here, so I'm lucky, so I can take a little bit further back. Look, my signal light's working there. Both my signal lights under the cab or in the four-way activation mode. My trailer mid-signal is working. And my four-ways are working on the back of the trailer. So that kind of concludes that section. We're going to talk a little bit now about uh, how to check your brake lights in a one-person operation. All right, folks, so the biggest thing we run into when we're doing a light check in the morning, and we all know it, is, is how do we check our brake lights? Brake lights are very difficult to check alone. Um, obviously, if you have someone else with you, a teammate or someone you trust beside you, they can depress the pedal, and that's great. Um, if you're against a wall and it's nighttime, obviously, yeah, you can check it and make sure they work. Or, or you know, um, if, if, there's, if there's a tool, like you have a brake depressor, or if you're, if you're able to put a boot or something on your brake pedal, that'll work. Another good option is to just put a little bit of weight of something, perhaps something in a plastic bag, put it on your spike. If you hold the spike down, that will put all of your brake lights on. And the last option is something that we have here in the yard that works really, really well. If you look, we have a big mirror here on our scraper. And what a lot of guys do, they'll pull through like I did this morning, and they'll pull through until they can see the brake lights on the trailer. And you can actually look back and see very clearly which lights are working just by pulling through this, uh, this uh, scraper for the snow. So something to think about as you're leaving the yard, perhaps do a little swing around, pull through and just make sure all your tail lights are, your brake lights are working by looking up at that mirror. Hi folks, Joel Neely here with Easton's Transportation Group. And we're gonna continue on with our reefer check. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do an actual check of the reefer itself, of the unit. So what we wanna do is uh, first off, is, is note that the reefer is in the off position. Uh, you don't want to have your hands in around any belts or any moving parts when you're doing a check if the reefer's on. So this reefer has, simply has an on off switch. You might have a toggle switch. It might be several different ways that it could be on or off depending on the trailer you have, but they're all pretty straightforward. So this one's the off position. Another thing you might note is we pulled our truck ahead a few feet. And the reason for that is is we just want a little more room to work. With some of these newer tractors, especially these newer Cascadias, they're pretty tight to the front of the reefer. So when you go and do your pre-trip before you leave, you know, don't back fully up to the truck, to the trailer, just to, just back up so you're close. But something to note is there's a hole here in front of your, uh, in front of your deck plate. You don't want to fall into that while you're working on your reefer. So keep a watch of that while you're up there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to climb up and we're going to take a look actually the inside of the reefer. So as you're getting up to your reefer, make sure you use three points of contact at all times. You're getting up here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the right hand compartment. So it opens up. And in this right hand compartment on these new Thermal Kings is uh, basically just a battery. So in this battery, you just want to make sure there's no large amounts of, uh, of any uh, rust or anything that would show that the terminals aren't connected well. And this is good. You know, you might see a little bit from time to time, but it, overall that's in great shape. Take a look at the batteries, make sure there's no bulging. Uh, if it bulges, that means there's probably a frozen cell in it, so you might want to have to get a new battery. Any of your connections, any of your lines, make sure there's no cuts or abrasions. So this looks really good on this side. All right, so the next part here is we're gonna actually take a look inside the reefer unit. So these, uh, these ones here, you pull them out and twist the handle down, and that's how you open them. This uh, side door here just has a little tab that you lift up. So in here you're going to notice there's basically a small motor. Um, it's a diesel motor that runs these and, and you're just looking at all the lines up here, all your fuel lines, all your electrical lines, anything that could possibly have any leaks or anything. If, if you see anything major, you're going to want to contact the shop and make sure that they know of it. You have an oil filter, sometimes you can see leaks around that. And uh, of course over here on the right, very important, is we have, a, we have our main drive belt. And oftentimes when you have a major failure with your reefer, the problem is that belt will actually uh, destroy itself and uh, that doesn't happen overnight usually it's over a period of time the belt will start fraying get some cuts in it so if we can catch that beforehand that could save a load and and uh, and save you a lot of time on the side of the highway where it could break down so another thing to check here is your oil it's the same as your car um, 
just a simple little twist and a dipstick. You're going to pull it out and check. This one here is full of oil. It's right up to the top, which is great. And you would just check that and make sure that um, you have adequate oil. If you don't have enough oil, contact the shop. Uh, they'll tell you what to use and what to put in it and, and help you uh, through the process. So again, you're just going to take a little more look here. Just make sure there's nothing leaking from any of the gaskets. No major issues of any type. You might see a little water and stuff in here. And that's just because these are open units coming from the two radiators up top. But uh, that's fine. If, if you see oil or coolant, then you should be a little more concerned. We'll close this back up, making sure it's closed tight. And the last panel that we're going to open is here on the uh, on the pasture side. And basically what's in here is just your, your refrigeration components. So if you ever see something that says like R40, 4A, that's refrigeration. And uh, this is what keeps your unit cold or warm, depending on what, uh, what you're hauling. You may notice some condensation on some of the pipes, and that's just because this unit was working lately and we, uh, we've just shut it off. And sometimes you might see a little icing down here, and that's why when we do defrost, that's what, uh, that's what it cleans up. There's also a couple little filters down here on the, on the side. You want to make sure there's no leaks again, nothing pooling, no oil, fuel, gas, anything like that. Just make sure it's uh, looking good. And the gas I speak of is, is any of the gas that goes in this R44A. So if you find you're seeing a leak, contact the trailer shop and they'll help you right out. Part of the pre-trip is going to involve the actual panel itself. So we're going to do uh, an actual computer-based pre-trip, which pre-trips the entire system, all the electronics, checks all the fluids and stuff. It does a really great job. But you want to make sure that the reefer is warm before you do that. So 10 to 15 minutes of runtime, warm the reefer up, then do your pre-trip. So a lot of guys will start their, their round the trailer pre-trip, warming it up, and then the last thing they do before they leave, they'll put that on a pre-trip mode and go. it'll go through its self-check and make sure that it's all good. If you were to do a self-check when it was cold on a day where it was really, really like minus 20, minus 30, it's probably going to register a fault and then that's going to show up as a code on the machine. So again, make sure that the machine has been warmed up. It's a diesel motor after all, before you do a pre-trip on it. So that kind of concludes the, uh, the last part of our reefer check. Um, it's very important that we do a reefer check before we leave. What we're seeing a lot now is uh, Guys are, are driving a couple hours with an empty trailer to go load. They get there and the reefer won't start, won't run. It's running co codes, it won't cool down. If we can fix those problems here in the yard, it's gonna save everybody a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of hassle. So we need to work together, do a proper pre-trip on that reefer before you leave, just to make sure that we can all get the, get the load delivered on time and safe as possible.